Hello, good evening, everyone. Today we have uh, Nisha is not with me. She went for a game drive. She's in, as you all know, she's in Masai Mara. And she went for a game drive and not yet back to the camp. So I'll be doing it alone with our amazing photographer who is going to join us today. Uh, she is born and brought up in Kenya. Her name is Neely Gutka and uh, an amazing photographer. I know her from a long time through uh, social media. Today, finally, we met online. <laughs> so let me introduce her. She'll talk, uh, tell more about herself. Hi, Neely. Hi, Army. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I'm a big fan of your work. <laughs> How's Mara? Mara is awesome. Yeah, we are having a good time here. Mm, amazing. I'm a bit yeah. jealous. Just I, a little I know, bit. <laughs> I know you're missing Mara a lot. <laughs> yeah, very much. I'm locked in Nairobi, but it's not so bad though. Yeah, I know you're almost 40 minutes away from us. <laughs> yeah, by <bye>, flight. <bye. laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, everything else okay? Yeah, all all good, all good. So, I would like you to introduce yourself, like how you started photography, how you came to photography and conservation and everything. Yeah. Um, crazy story. So, <laughs> I'm born and brought up in Kenya. Um, I'm born in a little town called Kitale. It's next to Mount Elgin. So. Since I was a little kid, we, been, we were doing all the game drives. We used to go in nature, but photography was never a thing. Okay. Um, I moved to Australia, did my bachelor's in accounting and finance in Australia, came back to Kenya, started working okay. as an accountant for a few years. But then my heart was never there. <laughs> I, I bought a a DSLR, I think in 2013, but at that point it was just point and shoot, anything and everything. Okay. Uh, um, the first time I realized I want to be a photographer was in 2016. I'd gone to Mara <laughs> with my little DSLR, <laughs> taking photos of animals. And then I came home, looked, looked at them and I said, hold on, this is something. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's how it all began. Um, 2017 is when I started getting more into it. And yeah, okay. here I am now, a full-time photographer and a safari planner. Great. Great story. Yeah. Motivating. <laughs> yeah, motivating. Thank you. <laughs> so you think we'll uh, start with your presentation and your journey in photography? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay so um this is actually one of my um hardest shot i've ever taken <laughs> um okay. funny story behind this uh these are actually the five cheetah brothers from the mara we were following them the whole day. You know how it is. If they want yes. to hunt, you have to have 100% patience, which I've learned Correct. after being a photographer. I was a very impatient person, but wildlife <laughs> photography has taught me a lot. So we were following them the whole day. I think they missed seven to eight hunts. Um, oh. This was like right in the evening, around 5.30-ish. And we had given up. Even the Tanoboras had given up. Um, <laughs> so they were sitting. And as you can see, there's storm clouds behind. So rains were coming. Um, mm -hmm. there was, we were, all we, we were doing is we were trying to now take um, photos of the sun setting with the Tanoboras. And this Impala didn't know they were sitting there. And the Tanoboras didn't know the Impalas. Impala was inside the bush. So my ISO was super low because we were trying to get silhouettes. My shutter speed was not <laughs> high enough. And all of a sudden, the Impala saw the cheetahs and the cheetahs saw the Impala and 
they just all jumped out okay. luckily <laughs> my it was it worked in my <laughs> favor and <laughs> got the shock and the impala ran right towards us um sad ending for the impala happy ending for the uh, cheetahs <laughs> who got their dinner after a whole day of trying and trying yeah so in fact that's the thing i've learned if you want to shoot cheetah hunt you have to have patience a lot of patience <laughs> otherwise it's not going to work um this oh that's an amazing one yeah this was from a um, recent trip to the mara um last year december so mm -hmm. we were trying to follow this pride no we heard on the radio that there's that this pride of lions who want to hunt so as soon as okay. we got there um two lionesses were already chasing this uh, warthog and her babies and it was it was insane because there were two lionesses chasing this warthog and they caught this baby when the mother ran the other side but they caught this baby but they they hadn't killed it yet they hadn't killed the baby yet but this mm -hmm. this sort of adult male came snatched this baby from them and went a bit far and sat down and started okay. licking the baby playing with it but not mm -hmm. killing it so it's sitting there we were like right there and i got this shot um great crazy shot um crazy sighting sorry um, i i couldn't believe um so i was trying to take videos at the same time i was trying to capture shots <laughs> um then all of a sudden the two lionesses came back to take their meal and okay. then the lion picked it up and ran mm -hmm. with it so this is where i got the um, so it, by then i think the the baby water got died already but it, uh -huh. the lion was running with the kill and you can see the little hyena behind <laughs> yeah looking at the meal going so it's from the same series um just a few minutes apart um so you have the, the video also of this yeah there is a video mm -hmm. uh, i think yeah, it's on your instagram you posted yeah i think yeah it's a, it's a real on instagram it's yeah. where the baby warthog is screaming and crying <laughs> and the lion is just playing with it yeah um yeah <laughs> uh it was actually um the lighting was really bad again um okay. winds were coming in storm clouds mm -hmm. uh everything was quite difficult because we were quite confused because as soon as we got there everything was just happening it's not like we had time to decide what and how but we were lucky enough to capture these yeah um yeah this oh <laughs> very famous story yeah very famous story one of the most epic thing i've ever seen i think i don't know if i'll ever see such a sighting ever again but yeah. this was crazy um sadly enough i was using my 200 500 and this thing this this happened really near close so i had to put down my camera at one point and take my phone <laughs> take a video which i think the video is also on my instagram okay but the story behind this shot is um that particular morning we found the luka her cub and the male so the yeah. cub's father together yeah. so we were with them for a few hours and um the the cub was, the, i think luka was trying to introduce the cub to the male okay. anyway so um after a few hours we left them and we went quite far and then we had our lunch and then we were deciding what to do so we're like oh let's go back to luka where we left her in the morning so as soon as we were leaving from lunch and we were quite far we were and we see a leopard and a cub walking okay. on the track and this is around 15 to 18 kilometers from where we left them in the morning mm mm-hmm. and just where we were having lunch a few meters away we saw this four or five lionesses sitting so we we know lion the lions around and we can we see luka and the cub walking but she didn't know 
Okay. The lines are round. Mm-hmm. Always with the only car. Scary. There is nothing you can do. There is mm, you can't interrupt anything. You can't interrupt uh, nature. Yes. But um. So you look across the car. She went she, as just walked a few meters from the car. This lioness came in and attacked. Oh. And the cub, luckily, 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 the cub ran away and hid inside um, tall grass. But uh-huh. this is where we saw leopards are really strong. She actually whacked the lioness so hard on the face. And then as soon as she realized her cub is safe, she actually ran on the other side and disappeared. And the lioness ran behind her. But she waited for a few, the lioness uh-huh. waited for a few minutes but couldn't find her and then decided to go away after a good hour or more okay. that's only when that's when luluka came to look for the cub and it was crazy like we were actually we were we were not sure whether the cub is okay or not but then that reunion of the of mm-hmm. the cub and the other meeting was the best thing we ever saw we were really excited about it and yeah this is okay. the shot i got um Mm-hmm. As I said, I was holding my 200, 500 mm. <laughs> I wish I, w- I didn't have time to grab my smaller lens. But if I did, I'm sure I, have, I would have got amazing shots. <laughs> this is actually a full frame. Yeah. There's no crop, nothing. This is how it was. Okay, okay. That's um, a lifetime frame. Yeah. <laughs> It's something which is... stuck in my head i don't think i'm ever going to forget this sighting yeah. and there we have the mere cat um this was from the same morning actually uh, <laughs> when the cub was uh, uh when the cub and the father were interacting luka was on the other side of the bank looking at the cub and that's what she does apparently she goes on okay. her two legs a lot it's a lifetime it's again a very rare thing to see um we yeah, yeah. i got this I'm, yeah it's a very rare thing then um so this is leopard going up same leopard going up and going down the tree taken a few minutes yeah. apart um this is lorian from and her cub was up the tree she had left the cub the whole day okay. this is again where i learned how to keep patience i kept on telling the guide uh, i don't think she's coming i don't think she's coming because we sat we sat with the cub the whole <laughs> day we knew where she was but she just wasn't coming we sat with her for more than 8 hours and we were like she's not coming she's not coming but at 6:30 in the evening she decided to come and yeah so she went up the tree the cub was really scared to come down the tree so she went up but of course the cub still didn't come down and i think after we heard that the cub actually fell out of the tree later on but we were in there um but the cub is fine now so it's all good uh but yeah taken okay. a few minutes apart she's going up and she's coming down as you can see on the right it's co- the the light is i mean on the left yes. where she's going up, the light is a bit more brighter yes that the one on the right where she's coming down because the sun was just setting then mm-hmm. monochrome giraffes um beautiful this is um Yeah this was again we were following this pride of lions and these giraffes were up in the horizon they knew the lions were there so that's why they were all looking at the lions we were lucky enough to get them in a line like that and there's just yeah. something about black and white and giraffes like that pattern comes out so well in black and white i don't know if i know not everybody agrees to this but Yeah this is just I love black Correct. and white in Europe. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Not everybody's cup of tea but yeah. So this was another crazy sighting as well. Um we saw this pack of hyenas um take down a wildebeest. 
um and as you know hyenas don't um kill before they start eating they start eating just even if the pre- the the prey yeah. still um alive yeah um so this was this is a very intense moment uh, this was even before the sun came out so my iso was cranked up um you can see the the mm-hmm. wildebeest is actually looking into the hyena's eye and you can see the hyena's face is all bloody because they were biting the wildebeest on the legs on the back everywhere didn't have a happy ending though and it was really gruesome to see but yeah this is nature and this is how it yeah. is out there um another very rare sighting um in 2019 there was a cheetah uh, mother in the mara who had given birth to seven cubs so these are six of the seven one of the cubs was mm-hmm. not somewhere else and it's it was so hard to photograph them because okay. they literally just sat on this mound for a few seconds because they were all hyper moving around and the sun had just come out so we got them in golden lighting which is very rare um yeah okay. a very rare sighting one of my favorite um cheetah sightings actually yeah it is a very rare sh- uh, sighting yeah um there is this where wildlife meets urbanization um this is taken in nairobi national park mm-hmm. um so at the back it's all city and then there's a fence and then you often see wildlife right there with the city background and you can see it looks like as if the giraffe is kissing the building um one of my favorite shots from nairobi national park again um yeah i think uh, nairobi national park is the only park uh, situated within the city yeah only park situated within the city and uh we've got the big four so rhinos yes. leopards um lions and um yeah uh we also have cheetahs which have recently they've been um spotted a lot um but yeah this is uh, it's it's another thing uh it's very different from all the other parks in Kenya um yeah you 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 actually uh you can see how um urbanization has is affecting the park and the mm. i don't know if you know they've built the railway right in the middle of the park so yeah. it's been a bit yeah but yeah this is a it's one of yeah it's a i like this shot because it's you can see the connection now um yes this is from samburu national park um mm-hmm. it was just taken a few days back actually um it's the 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 animals in samburu actually are very skittish so it's okay. very hard to find leopards doing this like it's not like mara or anywhere where the where, where these cats are used to cars uh cats in, in in samburu are very skittish they see cars they run away so this is actually a very rare sighting of seeing her walking right towards us okay and the lighting was amazing we took this just right after sun- a sunrise in the morning mm-hmm. and she has gorgeous blue eyes um one of my favorite shots of um cheetah cubs sadly um after um none of these cubs are alive anymore um this is imani she lost all her cubs she had four cubs but um this shot was actually a dream shot for me okay just capturing that moment that that emotion in this shot was amazing um i I, I 
it was taken actually it was right after sunrise but it was a very cloudy day so as you mm -hmm. can see there is no like the light is quite low okay yeah uh, again a very insane sighting another uh, rare sighting huh another rare sighting yeah another very rare sighting um it's been a dream sighting and um again like it was it's luluka again and her cub she actually walked with the cub in the mouth for almost 4 4 to 5 kilometers that day it was really insane the thing is um as you can see the light is a little harsh here so i had to work around it but yeah this is a very rare sighting again yeah um, um this is a cheetah cub on a dead okay not dead tree but a tree okay. um there were two cubs actually they were uh, they were playing turns on who can sit up so we saw them interacting for like at least for a half an hour they were pushing each other down playing while the mom just the mom was actually searching for food and they were they were on this playing this was right after the sun came out so you can see the golden light on them it was actually a really good sighting it's great um leopard portrait again in black and white i don't know if you can notice something if you can see inside the leopard's eyes the his um his pupils are actually heart shaped mm -hmm. so, yeah so i call this shot the look of love <laughs> um again this was taken in samburu a few years back um okay. it was uh, i i like this in black and white cuz you can see the intensity of the leopard you can like the spots are actually coming out mm -hmm. by lighting yeah several cat again a rare sighting it's really hard to find these cats in the mar anywhere actually um we found this mother and two cubs early in the morning just as the sun was coming out and um they were interacting they That's were playing with beautiful light they, yeah beautiful the sun had just come up they were playing they were chasing each other and this is the mother actually and uh, she sat up just right next to her car and gave us that look before she went on and you know, to play with the cubs was really good the light was amazing yeah. i think light makes all the difference actually exactly yeah this is taken at ambuseli um it's actually it's not as easy as people think to find elephants and kilimanjaro together <laughs> um <laughs> this is a yeah it's this is a big herd of elephants actually there's they there's a there's a, a big, um lake of water just around there so they were all marching to the lake for like drinking okay. and okay. yeah so it was actually a very rare sighting again um mm -hmm. the light was a, it was quite um as you know ambuseli gets a uh, harsh light very easily so this was not even that late um so as you can see the the light is quite harsh in this but yeah again the 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 yeah. mount yeah. looks amazing mm -hmm. black and white line again um you can see the power and the the actual i mean the teeth the the canines of this lion so i just love this shot in black and white cuz it it actually highlights all the 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 whites of the mane and the color i don't know if everybody likes black and white but i'm a big fan <laughs> of black and white <laughs> yeah yeah um interesting story behind this this was taken last year in the mara um, okay. 
uh, as you know, uh, every um, year right before the wildebeest come in from Serengeti, they yeah. um, rangers uh, burn the grass so um, yes. the wildebeest can have new and fresh grass. So there's always a debate of whether it's a good thing or a bad thing to burn. Because when we're burning, we're losing a lot of other small wildlife snakes and all that. So this was taken yeah. um, in the afternoon at around 2.30. But just because of the smoke and the, the heat, you can see it was, it was so, it was, I mean, the sun was getting uh, saturated. I mean, it was all golden light at 2.30 2 in the afternoon. And you can see like the, mm -hmm. the road in the middle is it's separating the burnt side and the dry side. So this was one of the landscape shots from Mara. Yeah, one of the year I have witnessed uh, the cheetah Amani trying to hide her cubs. The, uh, she keep on hiding the cubs in some grass and yeah. the fire started coming towards, towards the grass. So she oh, was struggling. No. Yeah. And, and the smoke is actually really harsh because um, yeah, just yeah. for us to even pass through and breathe is so hard. So now you can imagine the effect on the animals. Like um, when we saw the other animals like wildebeest and stuff, they, they, they seemed quite confused of what was going on. Yeah. So it was really hard to see. But yeah, again, if I mean for them to eat, they need fresh grass and because uh, they don't eat dry grass. So yeah. it's always a, who knows? I mean, what's right, what's wrong? Nobody knows. <laughs> this is from um, Savo East. Um, there's a watering hole in one of the um, lodges and these two little calves, they were playing in the mud. You can see the thing, the beauty about Savo is the red soil. So yeah. even the the elephants there are red in color. So because these are young, so you can't really see the color so much. Cause they're still gray or dark. Yes. But you can see they were interacting. They were trying to dig out some uh, mud to play around with. And this was caught right then. Um, the emotion, I mean, it, just the, cub, the calves playing was a really good thing. It was actually taken from the dining <laughs> dining room of the lodge. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, this is from Samburu. Um, these are reticulated giraffes. Uh -huh. um, this is something different from the uh, Maasai giraffe. Yeah, very different. The pattern is different. Yeah. Um, these are actually two male giraffes. And... Um, we saw them interacting. Um, they were trying to practice how to mate within mm -hmm. each other, but they, they were males. So it was quite funny to see them. We were we were all like just observing what they were doing. The beauty about this shot, is, I mean, about Samburu itself is the colors. Like you can okay. see this orange, this brown with the greens, and it's yeah. just a very different. It's it's quite nice. Mm -hmm. uh, these giraffes are only found in northern Kenya, not uh, not in the Mara. Yeah. Um, a portrait again of a lion. Um, you might be wondering why this space on the um, left, but I tried doing something different because we all see portraits with a lion centered. Yes. Um, but yeah, this actually, um, yeah, I tried doing something unique and I think it worked well. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful portrait. Something different, yeah. as you said. Yeah, his eyes are so, like, they were so scary, actually. <laughs> is it again from Mara? Yeah, this is from Mara. This um, He was actually uh, mating, so he wasn't happy about us being <laughs> around. You can see it on his face. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. silhouettes yeah i don't know if you you feel the same but um shooting silhouettes is actually very calming like relaxing i exactly. feel like yeah yeah it's so, i so feel the zen. same yeah so this was taken um in the evening as the sun was setting 
Mm-hmm. And Hermes, you would know how hard it is to find animals <laughs> in the own horizon. <laughs> Don't tell me, I know. <laughs> People think it's so easy. Oh wow, look yeah. animals, but only we yeah. know how hard it is to find <laughs> animals like this and especially with short grass and you know where the legs are visible. <laughs> yes. That yeah, is the so beauty so. of silhouettes when you have to show that legs visible. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like that is when the shot is complete when the legs are being seen. Exactly. Yeah, you can see the little um uh, uh re- the ox pecker on the on the eland yeah yeah and at this time of the year we will be struggling because the grass is tall after the yeah. rain yeah there are no silhouettes right now i'm sure <laughs> yeah uh, unless you find a tree you, you find a giraffe yeah but still i i mean yeah okay giraffe or a tree with a nice leopard sitting on it you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> then only you'll be able to get the silhouettes but yeah That's i right. think as once the gunas come in and clean the grass it will be back yes, to normal yes. hopefully yeah hopefully that happens soon <laughs> yes um yeah these are um uh cheetah cubs again the sun hadn't yet come up and we found this uh cheetah cubs uh with the mother and you know how um cheetah cubs are very playful so there's mm-hmm. a little mom just right next to they were and and we watched we watched them play on the on that mound for around half an hour it was so cute they would climb up push one another down go back up it was actually really nice so you can see you can see that bond between the two cubs here yeah sadly and at, at oh, this sorry. age they they are very playful and especially very early playful. mornings and late evenings yeah and the um beauty about um cheetahs is if you leave them somewhere in the evening and you go back in the morning you'll find them there cuz they don't move yes. around at night their yeah. eyesight is not as, as good as the other cats mm-hmm. yeah um sadly after two days of this sighting um one of the cubs was uh, i think i don't know i'm not too sure what had happened but um the guys were saying um hyenas attacked and so we oh. saw the mother and one of the cubs crying and crying and crying for you know looking for the other cub and it was just it was really heartbreaking i couldn't even pick my camera to take photos that is how oh, oh, oh. bad it was um yeah but i think i don't know if um, both the cub i mean the other cub is alive now this mm. was taken last year uh september okay um again black and white and zebras something i love the <laughs> contrast the color i mean it just the the way the 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 pattern comes out in black and white is just amazing um yeah. some animals look really good in black and white these are actually two male zebras um they were bonding it was early morning and they were bonding and this is one shot that i like in black and white in color it's amazing as well there's like nice light on them <laughs> but yeah i like <laughs> this in light oh yeah that's it so thank you so much for the amazing presentation thank you very much for having me it's it's so beautiful all the pictures and your experience we have couple of questions and comments from our audience yes sure yeah a lot of uh, appreciation for your photos i don't know one russian name i can't read it pure uh, <laughs> selva is saying so cool wow udit uh, udit patak is saying the giraffe one was looking like, uh, just like a sketch oh the black yeah. and white 
Yeah. The black and white giraffes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Dilip is saying, okay, one compliment for you as well. Beautiful photographer and beautiful leopard close up. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> he saying too many of you great photographers out there hard to decide who is the best it is not about who is the best it's about you enjoying everybody's pictures i feel exactly exactly i don't think there should be a competition yeah. in this everybody is unique everybody has their own style everybody yes. shooting for a and different then, reason uh, our intention is same our mission is same to yeah. bring more people closer to nature and yeah yeah to sh- to show people what nature is to capture those moments and show the world and yeah yes. i think everybody and most of the photographers we know are doing an amazing job and they're getting better only and it's amazing how so many young photographers are getting into this now it's yes. it's really nice to see yeah yeah exactly so only only person you have to compete it, it is with you yourself exactly. to make your also, pictures better yeah. Yeah. yes compete with yourself make yourself better that's it y- yes uh dreesh kutka is asking what got you started in wildlife photography oh wow um fun um i didn't mention this in my introduction but um a few years yeah. back I actually never used to go to any parks. So this was I would say from 2005 till like 2014 I had a phobia of animals you wouldn't believe. I would not I would never agree to go to any national parks. And okay. then something changed. Um a trip to the mara just changed everything and i said hold on this is not what i've always thought about and what made me become a photographer is i want to show the world what wildlife is it's not about myself that's why there's a reason why sometimes um i don't know if you see my instagram i post a lot of um gory things a lot of blood yes um yes not it's because that is nature that is what it is that is what yeah. is happening out there it's not all about nice um moments all the time about calves and mother it's sometimes it gets really raw out there and i like showing that to people yeah uh parisha is saying amazing pictures neely really uh, lovely Uh, which is your favorite cat in mara <laughs> oh parit um thank you parit um my favorite cat in mara ooh <laughs> there used to be this male leopard called yellow he's disappeared now um okay. i used to find him very handsome but yeah leopard of course favorite cat has to be leopard any day <laughs> Okay. Favorite animal is actually elephant, but favorite cat and favorite animal to shoot is a leopard. Okay. Uh Harman Singh uh standing work nearly and a super presentation. What is next on your bucket list to photograph? Who? Um Harman Singh here is asking. Harman Harman has set the bar really high for everybody actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very high. Um uh oh, bucket list next. Um there's a lot but I want to shoot um the black panther whether it's in Kenya or in India. Okay. <laughs> yeah and one of the reasons why is because of Harman. Um yeah he's actually the one who's always put this this thing about black leopards in my head and yeah that's on my bucket list and i think once um everything goes back to normal the first yeah. trip i want to do is to india to kabini and taroba <laughs> i think india is much easier than africa <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> i mean there are more yeah. uh, black leopards here for sure but the sightings i mean one in a what the chances are one in a million maybe i don't yeah. know <laughs> yeah 
uh, Udit Pathak is again saying mm, a great session, fantastic captures, best wishes for your journey ahead. Also, many thanks to Posters for these lovely sessions. Waiting curiosity, curiously for the next one. Yeah. Thank you very much. We we always try to bring in uh, uh, photographers who uh, tells uh, tell the story uh, that is happening in wildlife or in nature, so that it conveys directly to the viewers and they feel closer to nature. That's all about it. Very true. So Piyush Salva is again asking one more, uh, how much would a photo safari cost and how many nights should we book? Um, cost really depends. Um, I it just, it really depends. But I think um, to capture, to capture the moments, you need to have patience, a lot of patience. And if you do a short safari, I mean, it's, I'm not saying it's not possible. It is possible, but you won't have the time because you will have to wait long hours just for that one shot. So the yeah. longer you are out in the wild, the better it is for your own, um, for your shots. But yeah, it just, it really depends. I mean, you can, you can get all the cra all the sightings in one day, or you you'll have to wait maybe four or five days <laughs> to capture that one shot. It all depends. It's all on luck. You can never yes. predict nature. Yeah, yeah. I have seen people coming here three days and getting all the shots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's very true. And and and, and at the same time, uh, seven days, fourteen days without much pictures as well. So as yeah. you said, it's all about luck. It's all, it's just being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shasti, uh, who is a regular uh, viewer, is saying wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Maitreyi and Gupta, beautiful pictures. Vijay Kumar, uh, interesting session. Thank you. Uh, Maitreyi is saying, loved all the stories behind the pictures. Thank Safari you. with Usha, I think it's our Usha Harish. Yeah. Well done, Neely. Yeah, keep growing. Uh, thank you, Usha. Uh, Piyush is asking again, on a photo safari, what is the maximum number of days that you have spent in Mara? Oh, <laughs> um, last year, I was with Usha actually, um, done a lot of safaris with her. We were, I think that's the longest I've stayed in the Mara. Uh, it was 11 or 12 days. Okay. But that's the longest for me. Then I'll okay. come back and then go back to Mara. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Kilan, Kilan Kutka, great picks. Uh, Bhavya Shah, amazing presentation, Neely. Keep it up. Thank you. Hashid Chandaria, uh, amazing photos, Neely. You rock. <laughs> lot of compliments. Uh, Dilip is again asking, aren't you sad that yellow has vanished after following the favorite cat for years? I don't know what he meant. Oh, yeah. Yellow has vanished. He's been missing in action for a long time. Um, I actually uh, bug a lot of uh, guides and photographers out there asking them if he's been spotted, but no. Nah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Harman is saying, yes, we got to plan a trip to Kabini. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the works, actually. <laughs> if it was up Bridge. to Harman, we'd be planning this trip this year. We had actually planned. Everything was set. And then okay. COVID happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dridge is asking, is there any <clears throat> one animal you will happily photograph again and again? Leopard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Vijay Kumar is saying, I'm sure you must be inspiring a lot of women wildlife photographers. I really hope I am. Um, this is, sorry, but this is a very male dominated industry. Um, very few <laughs> female photographers are there. Nisha would agree to this. Um, I know. We yeah. are literally very few. Um, and I hope I am inspiring uh, women to come into this field. It's really, it's really nice seeing so many women these days are actually interested yeah, in yeah. wildlife photography. 
yes yeah. very true uh puja chandaria uh, wonderful presentation neeli we can really see your passion for wildlife and conservation coming through your beautiful photographs after mara what's your favorite park to photograph wildlife um thank you puja puja is a very good friend also a photographer um okay um puja uh, we done this with you just recently some buru definitely for the leopards okay maitri is again asking how many hours you have stayed in the safari in a day maximum um at least 13 hours 6 okay. to 7 easily you would know <laughs> yeah so breakfast is in the is in this oh, on safari lunch is on safari if it was possible we would <laughs> probably be having dinner also <laughs> out in the bush i know <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it doesn't happen it doesn't yeah at some point so we have to go home and rest our brains so we can come back fresh in the morning <laughs> <laughs> yes so uh, somebody is asking where is nisha ma'am akash ranjan so nisha ma'am is happily uh, shooting some leopards out there so yeah. she could enjoy today uh, piyush uh, again uh, nearly well done a lovely presentation and seriously that name jungle chick suits you <laughs> thank you peesh um yeah a lot of compliments about my uh, handle a uh, jungle chick um yeah i guess it i think it describes me <laughs> yeah <laughs> maitri is again uh, commenting on your uh, words about the wildlife female wildlife photographers so she's saying i am one of them nisha has inspired me so much i'll definitely see you all some day on the field amazing nisha has inspired a lot of people including me um just watching her out there is really amazing um yeah she she's doing a really good job yeah on last by rugby lion i saw yellow last year he mated with fig and hello? she she now has i think you got cubs. stuck hello hello can you hear me Uh, i think uh, nini has lost the connection let me try to connect her back again sorry about yeah. that no no issues mm. so we have couple more uh, questions no uh, i saw it not questions like <laughs> again i saw uh, yellow last year he mated with fig and she has now two cubs brilliant captures neeli and thank you hermes for hosting best wishes thank you very much yeah after everything even i got some good comment from chandra prasad hermes inspired me to get closer with nature and wildlife photography <laughs> amazing i think you, you deserve more than that your work is really good <laughs> thank you thank you yeah so veersha is saying awesome presentation neeli yeah i think thank we have you. read almost all the comments wow. so <laughs> it's it's yeah it's time for you uh, time for us to say bye to our audience today yes and thank you so much again idi it was a wonderful presentation and your stories were amazing thank you thank so you much thank you amit thank you so much for having me thank you post trails for having me um i really hope to see you out there in the wild very soon 
I really hope I can come to Mara yeah. very soon. And yeah, and definitely we yes. should plan something together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Before we All go, right. one more last. Okay. Do you guys do night safaris in Mara? There is no night uh, safari in Mara. Not in yeah. the reserve, actually. Yeah, in the conservancy, you can. Yeah, conservancy, you can, but not in the reserve. Yes. Yeah. Three Nili is from Nairobi. Yeah, from Nairobi. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so let's catch up once again soon. Yeah. Or of course. Thank, Thank you, you very again. much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. 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 Everybody, take care. See you soon, and with another wonderful session.